There are certain technologies that, when first showcased, look amazing, but once released, amount to little more than a gimmick. Universal Control was a technology that I really, really hoped would live up to the hype. It was one of the first major Apple breakthrough technologies that I could actually imagine myself using on a daily basis and seeing real world improvements in the way that I work. Well, with the latest updates to iPad and Mac OS, today, March 15th, is my first day actually using Universal Control. So has it been worth the wait? In this quick video, I'll show you everything that I've discovered so far. If you're not already aware, Universal Control is a technology designed to appeal to the growing number of owners of multiple Apple devices, specifically iPads and Macs. If you've got compatible devices, you can essentially use one Mac as your primary device and then make use of the input mechanics of that device, your keyboard, mouse, trackpad, etc., to control the other devices that you own. The setup that I've got is probably going to be pretty common for a lot of people, one Mac and one iPad, but this would also work if I had two Macs, say a desktop device like an iMac or a Mac Studio, plus a laptop and an iPad. I believe the limit is three devices. Setup is really easy. In your Mac, you head to System Preferences, then Displays, and ensure that all of the settings are enabled for universal control. You can also then use this screen to play around with the positioning of your screens. My Mac struggled a bit with figuring out the location of the iPad automatically. I reckon the Pro Display being sat in between and the distance of the desk is causing that, but it was able to tell whether my iPad was in portrait or landscape mode, which is pretty awesome. Then in your iPad, head to settings, airplay and handoff, and ensure that the keyboard and mouse control toggle is switched on. That's it. And that's honestly one of the things that makes this so crazy impressive. It takes so little work to set it up. And with the exception of updating to the latest operating systems, there's no additional software needed to install. And it just works like you would expect it to. As I move my mouse over to the left from my Mac, it first travels across my Pro Display, as you'd expect, but then when it reaches the bottom edge, it just smoothly passes over to my iPad. My mouse and keyboard are now controlling my iPad, which is game-changing. So before I gush about how this is going to change my workflow, let me quickly tell you what I've worked out that you can and can't do. I'm using a magic mouse and keyboard. I do have a touchpad, which I might have to also try out, but for the time being, this is my preferred control method. I don't know of a swipe gesture on the mouse to get back to the iPad home screen, and I can't seem to find one, but I do know that Command and H does this, so I might just have to learn some more keyboard shortcuts instead. The brightness keys on my keyboard will change the brightness of the iPad, provided I'm controlling it at the time, as do the volume buttons and the media controls also work, play and pause, etc. The F3 and F4 keys don't work for me, so again, I'm having to rely on keyboard shortcuts instead. Command and Tab is a good one for switching between open apps, Command Option D for bringing up the dock. I can also confirm that you can drag and drop files from one device to the other, which is just insane and will genuinely come in handy when working on more creative projects. Performance is good. I've noticed some lag with the mouse, not so much with the keyboard. It's tiny and not enough to stop me from being able to use it effectively, and I suspect it's to do with my Mac being all the way over on the right of my desk while my iPad is all the way over on the left. It's not something I want to change, so it's just something I'm going to have to live with. So, use cases. Well, in its most basic form, what you're getting here is an additional screen to use along with your other screens, but you're not having to use any of the power of your device to have that additional screen. Sidecar, for example, has been around for a while now, but that's basically turning your iPad into a display, nothing more. This is using the power of your iPad or your secondary Mac, whilst still giving you full control over it. That's pretty exciting, and the use cases are pretty much unlimited. I'm guessing it's no coincidence that Apple have released this at the same time as the Mac Studio because all of a sudden I can see an argument for having a desktop Mac and a laptop Mac. Prior to this my preference was to always go for a laptop because otherwise it would just be sitting doing nothing while you were in the office but this kind of opens that up. Today for example as I was writing the script for this video I was doing that in a Google Doc on my iPad using the keyboard and mouse of my MacBook Pro while my MacBook Pro rendered out a video. Or you could be working on your main Mac while a secondary Mac or iPad sits with your mail app open or Twitter or Notion. The options here are crazy. This definitely isn't a gimmick. This is definitely something I'll be using now every day moving forward. I'm super impressed. Nice one, Apple. What about you? Have you had a chance to try out Universal Control? 
What's your setup like and what do you think of it? Drop me a comment and let's talk about it. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.